Welcome to How To RC. This is the first part of waterproofing stuff. What we're building right now uh, are two water planes. So it uh, is appropriate that we talk about waterproofing. This is a product called Corrosion Block. Uh, basically, the only place I found it is in boat stores. I got this at West Marine. Um, became familiar with it when I lived down in the Keys, in the Florida Keys, because stuff corrodes down there really fast with that 80 degree salt water ocean. And so you spray up your electronics with this. This is safe for circuit boards. This is non-conducting. You can... Um, I think I read this one time and the base of this stuff is beeswax. But for our purposes here, I'm going to be waterproofing a servo. So... What we need is a, a container with this corrosion block in it that we can immerse the servo in. So I'm just spraying some of this into this little plastic container. It's been in that container for a couple of weeks now and and uh, hasn't eaten the container. I did this with uh, Corrosion X and in the matter of a couple of days it, it ate through the container. I had it in, uh, actually I had it in a paper cup and it ate through the paper cup and started to leak. And then I put it in one of these and uh, the plastic started to deform. So I finally put it in a glass jar. Anyway, for the rest of the uh, uh, waterproofing for the receiver, and the speed control. I'll show you how to use conformal epoxy. There's a product on the market by 3M called uh, DP270 I think. And uh, I think the conformal part just means that it will conform to all the irregular shapes on a circuit board although it comes in a two-part syringe it's kind of thin which is good for what it's doing. Now I've loosened up all the screws on this servo and I'm going to pull the bottom of the servo off and then I'm going to pull the top down a little bit. Oop! I pulled it right apart. Crap! Whew. With any luck I got all the gears back on there. Good to leave. A couple of the screws. So that doesn't happen. Because rebuilding that gear train, especially if they all had fallen out, would be uh, it's sometimes frustrating because if they all fall out, you don't know what order they go back into, and you've got to figure it all out. It's like reinventing the wheel. So I'm going to take this servo, and I'm going to put it in there. And I'm going to move it around a little bit, and in a little while I'll turn it over to make sure that there aren't any pockets of air in it. And I haven't had a servo stop. I've done dozens of servos. I haven't had a servo stop because I put it in this stuff. And if the circuit board gets wet, the servo keeps working. Um, the elevator servo on a Polaris is sitting up there in the in the uh, motor nacelle on top of a pylon and if you manage to flip the Polaris over on takeoff or landing, that nacelle is underwater. And uh, 
with the little motors we're using, you know, sometimes they have a shaft that comes out through the X mount. So you got to drill a hole through the firewall, the piece of plywood we use for mounting it. And that lets water into the nacelle. And if the servo goes, then you're into cutting the whole tail off. So I started doing this because I got tired of cutting the tail off to replace the servo. So we'll do the epoxy another day.